uh, welcome back everybody today to the Midlands Outdoors channel. Hope you've enjoyed my last video on Clentils which I placed up for you. So today is another day to be honest, it is pretty much the same as the other day I came out and I went to Clent. The within the wooden at the moment. But it is a different environment around it now compared to when I come in the summer. So we'll take a look today and then we'll have a good look around. But yeah, let's journey our way through the wooden now. And uh, I'm going to keep on going straight down in the path and I'll join up to you when I get to the, the side by the pool. I'm being quiet right now because right now just right in front of me I have actually seen deers cross from one point to another so they are in here today actually so if I can try and spot them it will be a bonus to the video so I'm going to get my other camera out and I'll have a little stroll in there see if I can actually capture some wild deer today for you so yeah guys I'm actually going to go off the path now we're going to go into this wooden part here where I've seen them go all the way in now if I am very quiet maybe I might actually catch up to where they actually went to you have to be very careful when you tread to spot deers though because we have got very sensitive hearing and if they like one trigger or noise go then they are gone I don't know whether I am actually going to catch up with these deers actually it is worth a try if I can get some nice shots for you they don't actually look that old they actually look like young deers they look like young from last year Right, I believe this is actually where they went into, so there is actually like a little trail of the path which I'm going to take. Right, I'm not, not making too, too much noise. Oh wow guys, there they are. Lucky enough, I've actually spotted the deers, look. I've actually got two of them looking at me right now. Absolutely amazing, just to spot these. You can see there, look at that. Lovely colours on them. Oh, I've just spotted somebody. I've gone all the way down the bottom down there now. There they are, I've just seen them go for the gap. So we have gone literally down the bottom down there. Absolutely amazing just to catch that first entrance into the woodland. And I've actually caught some deer. Absolutely amazing. You know what guys, even though I've just captured that, I must say that was really amazing because enough more woodland you have got opportunities to capture a wide range of different wildlife such as deers and again the bird life is, is amazing around here as well I've seen jays, woodpeckers again you can hear the little birds singing as well but I don't know if I get any more glimpses of those deers which went down the bottom I think they've ran now because there was a man coming up and down with a dog I don't know whether he was having a quick look as well She found the deers, there they are. You can see the end of them, look, just at the back. They're actually through that gap, look. And obviously two of them, which I can see, there's actually one there actually grazing from branches. I, I'm actually getting closer towards these, actually. Maybe if I can find a, a quick way to get around, I might be able to get some more stunning shots for you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head round that way down here, around the corner and actually see if I can get some more shots absolutely fantastic again I can still get visuals on the deers itself they aren't pretty much afraid that they know I'm here at a moment one of them spotted me but I'm carrying on feeding which is actually a good sign and another good tip for spotting deers if you are trying to get some good photography judge by the wind position as well because the wind is coming this way towards me the deers are that way so the scent is not going to blow towards them and spook them as easy so if you are walking towards them it's not going to spook them out they probably will have a good look but if you are very careful you're going to get some good close shots and get some nice photography on them so we've actually got another one i've actually seen more come down to join them so there must be loads of deers down that back corner and these are called fallow deers guys there's loads of these lurking around clentils itself 
and within your small area. They don't just stick to the woodland, they actually leave the woodland and go from a majority of the local area as well. I have seen them on fields at Romsley. They, they have been at the back by, um, I don't know how many of you know, Bibby's Farm, which is a local farm just at the side of Huddington. They've actually been in the fields there as well, grazing. You can get some nice stunning shots and there is again not just the, the young ones in here. There is more of the variety of range of adults in here as well. I have seen ones with big antlers and if you can catch them as well at the same time it is really stunning. I could spend hours just watching these deers. Actually if it wasn't actually spotted me I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it's going to become a stunning morning now because the clouds are starting to vanish. We've even got a nice view of the sun coming through the trees now. Again, enough more woodman. What I must say though, it is really wonderful just to see the different sceneries which you've got. You've got all these different kinds of ferns which lurk within the depths of these woodlands. Again, all the moss which grows on the floor. Look, you see there's a, there's a wide range of different mosses which grow within this woodland. And again, the plant life over here is absolutely amazing as well. You can actually get some rare plants which grow over here. And if you are spotting them in the, in the spring, it's definitely worth it. The bluebells are fantastic in the spring. We are gonna be coming back to this place to come and show you what it actually looks like. Absolutely spectacular just to come and see. But looking at the deers at the moment, I think they're actually moving on. So I'm gonna keep on walking and um, if they do disappear, then we'll continue around the back of the woodland. So yeah, everybody, the deers have gone now. They've actually run off. But this area looks pretty much amazing. And it does look like this could have some potential wildlife for when the spring actually comes. Because just looking right in front of me, you've got all these pine trees. I have actually noticed something pretty, really interesting. Now, just right in front of me over there, there's actually like a tree. And the pine trees, which are snapped in half at the top. Now look at the bottom of it, it actually does look like there's, there was been woodpecker nests in there and I don't know because they do look pretty much really fresh whether they're going to be start preparing for the spring because there is like two or three holes so again this could be a potential area, there is more down the bottom as well on that other tree so it might actually be worth coming back here in the spring to see if I can actually capture some nice photography of the woodpeckers so I actually found a potential nest for where they could be but looking around though, it, it is again, I'm just looking at the trees at the top. I can't spot anything just at the moment. And I can hear like a little bird singing as well at the same time. But yeah, I'm going to keep on walking. We'll have a quick walk around the woodland itself. And I'll get some nice uh, shots as well if I can find any wildlife on the way for you at the same time. I'm going to go back around on the path and I'm going to go back down to where the pool is at the bottom and walk the bottom of the woodland down there. Again, it's a big long path and there is obviously some hides, maybe potential, could get some nice deer photography over that way if there's any lurking over there. Let's make our way back and uh, we'll catch up with you in a little bit guys. Yeah, I just want to mention as well, if you've never been to Uthmore Woodland, then it's definitely the place to come and check out if you're into your wildlife. You just want to get out and have that general stroll through a place like this, what can potentially hold much to see. I mean, there is that much to see over here. I mean, there's been times when I've come over, it has been very quiet and I have not spotted much, but today, like I spotted those deers. Again, even if I just capture that today, I'm just amazed at what I've saw today. 
but obviously comforted by the streams which actually run through Uffmore as well it does actually help to bring the majority of the wildlife forward to be inside it to see like a stream running down there as well just going all the way down and there is actually old well there used to be like old ancient streams within this woodland because again it does tie into quite a bit of history as well dating back many many years ago and you've also got St Canelms which is further atop as well where the source of the river Stour is and that again is pretty much old as well it's got some history to it but yeah it is pretty much a really nice place in the Midlands just to come and take a look at a nice dense woodland So yeah, they are very big long paths down the Uffmoor itself. Now the path that I usually take, if I come up to just for a general stroll, I will come straight from the bottom end where the back uh, entrance is at the bottom. Now I'll come all the way down here and then you come past like a little, where there's like a little pool. And if you keep going straight down that path on the right down here, you keep going and if you turn right, it will bring you out by the side of the car park and then it will journey your way back down on the edge back towards the entrance to where I come from. Again, it is a nice little walk and I do tend to like come up here from time to time. Even if I've got nothing to do, it is just an amazing place to come and check out. But it's looking inside there though, I mean, all the dense overgrowth is starting to die back now. So it's giving you like a bit more better views to see what's inside there. Now, when trying to spot your deers again as well, you're looking for like areas like this because deers tend to actually sit down and lie down within the the bracken over there which is dying back I have seen them in here as well in this like, little part but it is really quiet and I can't hear much bird life now since I come from the bottom I haven't, I haven't really seen much yet apart from those deers you never know I mean like on walks you, you tend to see anything that's in your path you, you're not going to see anything all the time and it's just what it's about really coming out just to see what you can see which will make your day but it's listening though it's, it seems to be very quiet today so yeah I am thinking about heading to St Canals as well in a bit because obviously coming into this woodland and showing you this I am thinking about coming back in spring realistically because that's when you tend to get a majority of the wildlife seen enough more and I've seen loads of birds within the spring down here before I was when the leaves are starting to come on the trees and the birds are nesting it's the best time to come but today it is really muddy down here because you can see all the the long path which is down the bottom look look how long that is and obviously it goes all the way to the bottom and you can obviously turn to the car park down there and obviously you've got some little paths down here as well and there is actually a path here and that goes to the other side of the woodland at the far back and obviously you can actually take a little path from there as well and get back onto the bottom of that where the Romsey fields are here's a nice little walk I've done that before but again it is because we've got I've had all the rain we've actually got like moisture which has actually created this like little stream and this like little bog which has gone down here look and you can as well obviously if you start this up into the spring you will get like little like tadpoles and stuff in there so it is again a nice little place to hide for the wildlife as well and obviously for them to breathe but it's looking inside there though I can't really see much anything in there at the moment but again it's like today the weather as well look at the sky it is a bit on the half and half today they have forecast thunderstorms believe it or not again it's the 1st of January 2022 and I wouldn't expect thunderstorms for this time of year though at the moment but it's been really mild it's actually been 15 degrees and it's actually 14 today so it's just a degree lower but yesterday it was it was absolutely amazing just to be out in the weather like what it was up Glen Tills to see the views and stuff but you would think there'd be quite a lot of actually like bird life into here so I can hear some singing now just over there but it's just trying to spot them at the moment from where they're actually coming from. So yeah, this journey around the corner as well, this is actually the pool which I just mentioned. You've actually got, when we get the rain and we get quite a lot of wet weather, we do get some like little streams which actually run into this pool. And there are actually streams are running through the backs down there and you can actually see all the water starting to accumulate and then one time when the first ever come down here the very first time 
the water was actually touching the path down it was actually like a big proper pool but this actually again it does bring a majority of wildlife and believe it or not i've actually seen mallards in here as well and some ducks but actually we got in here as well because there is like a little path which again goes into the woodland i've been through here before let's have a quick look again it is just lovely to come and take these off paths though because you can just see the majority of the plant life as well and this time of year as well you do get the fungi which actually grow from the trees and obviously all the dying material on the floor there is actually some like little fungi right now just to show you and we've got some on the side of the tree look I've actually got a couple here as well that's growing off the sides up under there get a nice little bit of view for you it's the best view to try and spot all these there's actually more you can see that there's more growing off the side of these trees as well where it's all dying back look at these ones it's absolutely amazing just to spot those look at that and there is just looking on this one as well we've actually got others we've got more there look gonna have to say though it is really lovely just to see how the moss is actually taking over the branches which have actually died back and fell down look at this i mean it is really wet as well so it's moist on there look how much moss is accumulated and going all the way down there's not even a gap between where there's, there is not not a little bit of moss it's just all taken over it it's like a carpet of moss look at that you can take some nice stunning shots from there look at the view of that especially the tree up there as well where it's all growing up some great photo opportunities which i've seen so far yeah just sitting round while we bike now i'm actually sitting in the middle of like a, a little bit of the woodland which i walked down to it's on this branch and there is again i have spotted some nests just one up there where i'm pointing that is actually like a little jay nest up there which like the other year i came down and actually spotted that and i was actually watching it come backwards and forwards from there so it is like a little spot to actually spot some of the wildlife but again i've actually got some information up for you with on the website so we've actually got the the woodland choice which actually tells you what wildlife you can expect within Uffmore woodland and a bit of information as well so we've got something here that says the 85 hectare 210 acre Uffmore woodland is 1.6 kilometer one mile south of hales owen and 13 kilometers eight miles from central birmingham Again, there is some more information about the wildlife which you can expect. So you've got your great spotted woodpeckers, buzzards, again, all your deer. So you've got your roe deer, muntjac, your fallow deer, and obviously your wild birds as well. So you've got your bullfinches, chaffinches, nuthatches, your jays, which I mentioned, robins. And obviously this place is pretty much popular for its woodpeckers as well. Within the early spring, you can, if you're lucky enough, get certain parts into here. You'll hear the drumming of the wood and you can spot it and if you get close enough to try and hear it you will try and find the potential area where they're making their nests and like the start of the video i did show you like where they was actually making their nests with the holes within the pine trees so again it is like a nice little place to go and take a look in the spring just to see if they are nesting so again you can expect more things from here so you've got even plants and fungi so there is again a, a wide range of different fungi which you can expect to see um, again trees as well there's that many trees around here and off more woodland as well it has a, a diversity between different kinds of trees so you can expect to see more wide range of different ones so where we're sitting right now it's more of like pine trees at the moment and again some of the odd like other trees that i'm surrounding the local area as well so again there is more like other things for the plants like bluebells in the spring are pretty much really nice to see it covers the whole range of the area so you can obviously see it's a bit dull and there isn't much here at the apart from the dying back material and plants now that actually gets covered by bluebells in the spring and it is really enough to come and take photos so moving on to the history now which is my favorite part so the name of the site means offers more king offer ruled mercia middle england from 757 until his death in 796 the site has probably been wooded since the end of the last ice age, but during the 1970s, most of it was felled and replanted with a conifer mix until 1978. It formed part of the estate of the 18th century, Hagley Hall, but it was sold to LG Harrison Co. Limited of Stoke Prior near Bromsgrove. So the Wooden Trust took over the site in 1986, and the conifers have been thinned, particularly around the remnants of the ancient woodland, to allow the ground flora to regenerate 
again a nice little piece of information there for you so that's pretty much that all covered for you before we move on to St Canals later where we'll cover more bit of history but you can see as well how, how far it dates back as well and to be part of Hagley Hall Estate that is pretty really amazing because Hagley Hall it is again pretty much of a distance away from here so you've have you've got off more here and you've got Clent Hills which is situated by the side and you've got the private Hagley Woods so it is again a pretty range of like land just to cover from there so yeah let's keep moving on i'm going to keep walking through the woodman now come by the car park i'm actually going to go to st canals now and start heading up that way and uh, we'll go and take a look at what's up there some of the ancient history which lurks up there as well but it's a shame there isn't too much wildlife to try and spot today because obviously trying to spot the wild birds there isn't actually too much so springtime we are going to be coming back to this place because i tell you what it is amazing just to spot what you can see everywhere So yeah, again, I have walked a bit further around the woodland itself. Uh, I, I can hear the birds singing, but I can't really tend to spot the wildlife too, too much at the moment. And I've been speaking to some nice locals who are from Howes Owen, and even they said, because they come to bird watch as well, but they've actually spotted the deers at the same time as me, lucky enough, so I thought, well done on them, because when I first walked in, I can't believe I even got my eyes on them. But yeah, like they said as well, the best time to come and spot the bird life is spring, and it definitely is, because you can just see a, a wide range of different stuff which actually is over in the Uffmore Woodland itself but I'm actually in like a little open area at the moment and I have spotted the deers over here before and if you walk into that bit I have seen the deers with over that part as well it is amazing if you can spot them over this side because I've seen the adults over here but yeah I'm going to keep on moving on now I'm going to journey my way now to St Canelms so let's uh, get out of the woodland now and uh, head over to there I'll tell you what though, that was absolutely a steep hill just to come up to that. I'm sort of out of breath. I'll sort of catch my breath in a little bit though. So this round the corner now is actually the gates to the St Canals Church, which I will quickly just show you. There we are, there's the gates for it. As you can see as well, look at the architecture of this wood. Just right at the top, look at that. It's got that, that nice wooden architecture. And again, we've actually got another something to do with the church. We've got there in memory of Herbert R. Aiden, 1873 to 1954. And I think he just says, um, sometime uh, chorister of this church, these gates were represented by his daughter, Irene Hayden Towersy, in 1977. Again, nice little piece of history, but look how old the gates are as well. Pretty much really old. And you can see as well, up there, the architecture of that not, not, nice little ornament type thing up there, looking down. 
but again there is quite a lot of information and history behind this church it is really old and it dates back quite quite a bit and we will be covering a bit of history for you in a little bit um i don't know if you can go through here yeah you can actually no you can't so i'm going to go around this way and, uh, go to the footpath which goes around the side so here we are there is actually a public footpath which goes around the side of the church if the gate is unlocked you can get through this way so because obviously there is a public footpath which actually goes down the interesting part in a little bit which uh, is actually the source of the river Stour, which runs down we've actually got the legend of st canal down there as well so a nice little piece of history for you which i'll be telling you more in a bit so we'll come back into the church in a little bit but we'll go down and we'll actually go and have a look at the uh the source of the stour wow it's really muddy down here it, it has actually been quite a while since i've been to this place and again i do love the walk from it obviously that walk which goes all the way down the bottom and it comes out to the bottom by uh Uffmore woodland wow doesn't look like this place is really maintained because you can see the steps which are going down and it looks like nothing's really been done with it and the same for that like steps which are going up to that bench as well it's like really gone overgrown and all the uh, the br bramble and stuff are starting to take over it so i'm just going to try and batter my way through it right now here we go so here we are this is actually the source of the river stara so this is actually the lung river which actually runs from the side of Howell's Owen all the way through past Aiden Hill and it goes all the way to Stalbridge, then to Stalport into the Severn so you can see, I mean, this journey is pretty a long journey for the river itself you see all the moisture which is gaining from the ground up just at the bottom and that obviously gains, it drains down to the bottom and ends up in like a narrow stream I believe as well there might be like little tributaries running into the river to give it an extra bit of flow but this is actually the main source for the river Stara going all the way down Again, we have got the history plaques as well telling us about the St. Canelms and what actually happened here. So, let's go and take a quick look. And I've got the history online just to tell you about. But look how old the wall is for the uh, the source of the Stour though. It is really, it's coming apart as well, some of it, so it is really, really old. So here we are, I mean, it's actually the plaques for it, which I'll tell you about right now. So we've got the legend of St. Canel. I won't be reading that one, it's mainly going to be this one just here so it, i'll read it out to you so it says near this spot rises a spring said to mark the spot where Canelm, prince of mercia was murdered and buried circa 820 a.d the surrounding land was donated to st Canelm's church by the viscount cobham in june 1985 again nice little piece of uh, information there for us so i'm just going to sit down on the bench up there and i will be telling you more about st Canelm and what is this place and how old actually is it all together so yeah, we do actually have a range of information, quite a lot on here to be fair. So it actually does say St. Canelm or Sinelm was Anglo-Saxon saint, uh, venerated throughout medieval England and mentioned in the Canterbury Tales, the Nun's Priest Tale, lines 290 to 301, in which the cockerel, uh, John de Clear, tries to demonstrate the reality of prophet dreams to his wife, Pertolote, William of uh, Malmesbury, writing in the 12th century, recounted that there is, was no place in England to which more pilgrims travelled than to uh, Witchcombe on Canelm's feast day. So we've got uh, here, so St. Canelm, uh, it's got something new, it says uh, born uh, 786, uh, died on the 17th of July 811, so I think St. Canelm, it actually looks like it was a person so uh, we've actually got here as well uh, pictures of St Canal's church and I'll put a couple on for you now which you can see just on there St Canal's church in legend St Canal was remembered of the royal family of Mercia a boy king and martyr murdered by ambitious relative despite receiving a prophet a prophetic dream warning him of the danger his body after being concealed was discovered by a miraculous intervention and transported by monks of uh, Winchcombe to a major shrine where it has remained for several hundred years the two locals most closely linked to the legends are Clent Hill south of Birmingham identified the scene of his murder and the small Gloucestershire town of Winchcombe near Cheltenham 
um, he says there, where his body was interred. The small church of St Canon, dating from the 12th century in a village called Kenelstow, now stands with a handful of houses within the larger village of Romsey in the Clent Hills for many years. Villagers celebrated the St Canon's Day, which is on the 17th of July, with a village fair and the ancient uh, custom of crabbing the parson, bombarding the unfortunate a cleric with a vo volley of her crab apples so again some information there so we have again the legend of St Canal more information uh, here so it obviously says that in 819 or 821 uh, Conor Wolf of Mercia died leaving two daughters uh, Grenrydra and uh, Bergenhardra uh, and a son of a child of seven years of old named Canal, who was chosen to succeed him. Uh, Crendrida uh, end endived her little brother and thought that if he were killed, she might reign as queen. So again, he says here as well, there is many other things about hunting trips and all the different kinds of things. So if you look it up, you type in St Canalms, you will get more information about what this place is, stuff linking into it. There's quite a a lot of bizarre information about this place and loads of things about the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, Worcester, it links into Worcester Abbey and kinds of different things because obviously it's a church it obviously can link into other things as well so looking at the murder so I will try and find it out for you um, but yeah trying to look online I can't I did have it on my computer earn about the information about how uh, Prince of Mercia was killed but Looking at it now, I can't find it on the on the internet. I'm, I bet many of you probably know about the story of the St. Canals as well. And if you do find it quite interesting, then feel free to drop it in the comments as well. We, I'll feel free to uh, discuss with you. I'll comment back if you want to put something on there, like a piece of history. So, but yeah, it is quite a, a nice little relaxing place, this area. I mean, as well, just sitting here, just got all the wildlife surrounding by the church with all these trees around here. And again, obviously down by the river Stour as well and that walk which goes further down there I might go and take a look in a little bit but yeah let's uh, move on I will have a quick look around the church and I will show you how old the sandstone is on the wall as well and I believe the church itself is dating back quite a bit so yeah here we are actually this is actually a public footpath as well so the fact the footpath actually does link in like I mentioned it goes all the way down there past the, the bottom and actually goes straight as well so it actually leads to Clent Hills where the Nimmins are so if you will get to the end of the road and turn right you will end up at the Nimmins so it's not actually too too far up there but this is the church just around the corner I don't know what it's actually like inside it I've never seen it uh, whether there's any photos online with inside the church but you can see by the bricks as well I mean how old the place itself all together and you can see as well like I mentioned it is sandstone because it is really chipping away and it's actually falling apart slowly so over many many years this church will eventually it will start to cave in really bad because you can see a bit of the brick wall it's on the corner there which is chipping away you can see it just put my hand on it it's all coming apart you see all the wood nice in there as well but again there was like loads of like doorway systems that have been blocked in look so this would have been an another doorway within to the church itself which you can see there, which has been blocked in. And actually, how I know it was a door, because you can tell by the arch and look at the, the little catch just in there, so it would have been a doorway into something. And again, there must be like little cellars in here as well, because you can see like air vents at the bottom. But look at that, and it's just amazing just to see as well. Look at the, the little architecture of those up there, it's just amazing. So I'm going to go pan around, and again, another doorway system which has been bricked in obviously into there so i would love to know what it would actually look like with inside this church i bet you there is some nice architecture in there i don't really quite know but you can see the old stained glass windows which are ancient as you can see as well but that's why it's been actually grated to stop it from being destroyed and you can see the brickwork which is at the top where it's gated in wow so that's absolutely amazing there is if you look on the sandstone we'll try and find something you can actually find like very old dates and names which have been engraved into the sandstone look there is around there there is dates from the 1800s which have been engraved into the wall 
I'm not going to have to find anything. You got one there, look. 1964. Someone's actually put their name on there. That's on the brick wall. There's like little loads of ones there. Different kinds of names. And again on the wall there as well. Maybe some mad dates if you try and find them. But wow. Let's have a look around the other side. We'll go around this like little area for you. So yeah, it is pretty much a really old churchyard itself as well because you can see most of the old graves which are down in. There is actually an old light as well within the church. Most of the graves, you know, dating back to the late 1800s and beyond that. But again, we've actually got look at the architecture of the church from the top up there. It was always absolutely amazing. I like the, again the stained glass windows up here which have been covered. But it's really really bad with the, the walls though, the way they're decaying though because you can see that I ain't going to touch it much because it is falling apart again you've got your names on here which are fading away quite slowly again on here look I call the names on here a lot of fake names look again on this one look you see the ones that have been carved out look again like a little cross look at that <laughs> wow have a quick look around this part. Wow, look at this. Again, okay, you can see a lot of the decay and erosion from there. Look, it's absolutely crazy. But the, the front of this is really nice as well, which you can see that. Look up there. Again, this is actually where I've seen some of the old names as well, just on this bit, because it doesn't look like this is actually eroded much compared to the other side. We've actually got 18. There's a date there, 1867. Wow, <laughs> that is old. Again, some dates from the 1800s, 1900s on there. And again, just looking around the corner, we've actually got, look at this. It does look like a sort of Tudor style. Look at the, uh, the got a wall up there, the woody beams. It's crazy. You can see how, how decaying that is as well on the wall, look. So again, there is quite a lot of much information and history behind this church. So it is definitely worth, if you're into that kind of stuff, then definitely look it up or come and pay a visit up to here. So it isn't too far away from Alzo and just to come and check it out. So yeah, so it's time to journey our way back to Alzo and now just a little stroll down the path and then we'll cut the video down the bottom. I want to say thank you so much if you watched this video so far and join me on the walk along the Uffmore Woodland and Sun Canals today. I do much appreciate it if you watch it all far. Then please do feel free to hit the like button and also please hit the subscribe button as well so it keeps you up to date with all my latest content and you'll never miss a video which I pop online. There is more to come yet. We have still got a journey our way through the Black Country, cover more history along the canal lines. Again, much more new things as well down the back of Stalbridge. We've even got Bunker's Hill to go and check out the woodlands. More wildlife videos. So it's going to be a big year this year. So the 1st of January. It's been a nice day to come out. But again, it is starting to go sunny as well now. Enjoying the best weather and moments while we've got it at the moment. Because it has got to get colder. And apparently I have heard we may get a bit of snow. Who knows what comes around the corner. But... It is actually quite a nice view up here as well, just looking down the bottom. There is actually a nice view of the uh, Turner's Hill as well. I've never been to Turner's Hill. That is another thing to do on my list with a big point which is sticking up by the end of uh, Black Heath at the back. It is nice to just go and check out. So it will be another thing on my list. But yeah, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the video which I have for you, the cinematics. And uh, don't forget, check out all my latest videos which I have for you before. And uh, see you soon. Hope you've had a good new year.